One of the greatest retro gaming systems of all time is the PC Engine. It's definitely one of the more lesser known systems of its time. While it has amazing graphics, sounds, and design, there is one shortcoming that it faces, and that is the length of its controller cables. In today's retro gaming scene, there are many solutions for wireless or Bluetooth options, but the PC Engine has been lacking in such an option until now. Enter Darth Cloud and his contribution to the retro gaming scene in the form of Blue Retro. I'm sure some of you are quite familiar with this project, but if you're not, in short, the Blue Retro project is an open source project that allows you to use any Bluetooth controller with pretty much any retro game system under the sun. It's run through an ESP32. In today's video, I'd like to take a quick look at the Blue Retro and its PC Engine dongle to see how to set it up, what it does, and my thoughts on the device and ease of use. So let's get scruffy looking. This particular board was designed and created by PMG Ducati. He kindly offered to assemble and flash the board for me. Not only did he help me out by assembling and flashing the units, he also gave me a few other board revisions. So I've got a few here he threw in for another system. So those will be future modding videos for sure. This is the board for the PC Engine dongle. This is the board for the Blue Retro. Here is the ESP32 that it runs on. The Blue Retro can be plugged into pretty much any system as long as you have an adapter dongle. Impressive, right? Darth Cloud doesn't like to toot his own horn, but in this case, I believe he is well deserving. All too easy. So let's see how easy it is to set up, shall we? Plug it into the PC Engine of your choice, grab a Bluetooth controller, turn on your PC Engine, wake your controller. The controller should sync with the Bluetooth receiver. If not, hold the syncing button on your controller, and it's that easy. Let's play some classic Gradius, shall we? Okay, so it works with this controller. Let's try out a few others. To set up, you'll need access to the Blue Retro Web Config menu. Connect the Blue Retro unit into the PC Engine dongle by way of the robust 25 pin connector. Impressive. Pop in a game and power on the console. The blue indicator light should be flashing, indicating it is ready for pairing. Grab your Bluetooth controller of choice and press the pairing button on the controller. If you get a solid light on your controller and the blue retro light has turned off, you're ready to go. Well, unless it doesn't. Unfortunately, not all controllers are set up from the start, ready to work flawlessly. In this Super Famicom DIY 8-bit DO controller, D-pad doesn't want to respond. Oftentimes, 8-bit DO DIY controller D-pads are in the left joystick mode. Not to worry, this can usually be corrected by pressing up and select for five seconds. You'll see the indicator LED on the controller flash once in red, indicating your controller's D-pad has been selected. Okay, now we're ready to start blasting Womp Rats in our T16, right? Yes, but there's one option you may want to enable and fine tune before you get all Emperor Palpatine up in there. Use your aggressive feelings, boy. Open up the Blue Retro Web Config page. Click on Advanced Configuration Menu. Scroll down to this drop down menu labeled SRC, short for Source. In our case, it'll be the 8 bit DO. In this drop down box, DST for Destination Controller. You want to pick PCE for PC Engine. If you scroll down to look at the mapping configuration, you can see the source and destination controllers and how they're set up. Y is set up to the two destination, B is set up to the one destination, and A is set up to the one destination. Here you want to change the button arrangement on the destination side so that it matches your preference. Usually B would be two and A would be one on the PC Engine controller. If you want to add turbo functionality, I would set Y as 2 and X as 1. To enable turbo, there's a turbo column. Look across from the top buttons which are Y and X. 
It says disabled underneath the column. Click it and a lengthy drop down menu appears. There are many different frame rates to choose from. Darth suggests two fourth frames is similar to the top speed selected on the original controller. I've played around with this a little, but so far I think two fourth frames is the best. Scroll down to the bottom and click the save button. Turn on your controller by pressing start. It should link up with your Bluetooth. Okay, now we're ready to get Palpatine power hungry. Just check out how smooth this is. It feels really, really nice. I can't notice any lag, although I didn't do any lag testing. I think it feels really fluid. I've found that I much prefer mapping the 2 button to Y and the 1 button to B. It just feels more ergonomically correct when you're using a Super Famicom controller because that's the way your thumb just naturally rests across the two buttons. It makes it very easy to control that way. If you really want to help improve the quality of the channel, please consider donating by way of super thanks. Just click the heart with the dollar sign and choose the amount you'd like to donate. It'll help upgrade the quality of future videos. Plus, R2 could really use a new motivator. But if you can't, that's okay too. Just remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you will get to see new retro game hunts, mods, and refurbs from here in Japan. Because it's free. And it happens every week. As for my thoughts on this blue retro PC Engine dongle, it reduces the need for stretching your controller cables across the living room. So that's a huge plus in my book. It functions beautifully. No PC Engine owner should be without turbo. And this puts cord free turbo power right in your hands. The only downside is it can be a little finicky to set up depending on your Bluetooth controller. I found that the 8-Bit Doe Pro 2 worked right out of the box. And all the Switch retro controllers that I own worked well too. The only controllers I had problems with were the 8-Bit Doe DIY controllers because the D-pads didn't register right away. But it was an easy fix by holding up and select for five seconds. <sighs> While the controller configuration menu can be a bit intimidating, it's worth checking out to get your preferred gaming experience. Since Blue Retro is open source, there have been constant updates and improvements over the last year that I've had mine, and things are becoming more intuitive. There have been a lot of cool new Bluetooth dongles coming out left and right. It's really great that Darth Cloud made this an open source project. I really love the design and simplicity of the units PMG Ducati produced. The IO units are really nice too. Big thank you to him for all his hard work and kind help. All the boards and IO units he designed are up on his GitHub page, which I'll link in the description below if you're interested. To all PC Engine fans, I highly suggest this blue retro PC Engine dongle. It's so nice to be able to sit back in a comfy position while playing your favorite PC Engine shooters. Another huge thank you to the creator of the Blue Retro Project, Darth Cloud. Without his hard work, we still wouldn't have wireless Bluetooth gaming on all our favorite retro consoles. Yeah, all too easy. Also, I want to thank the homie Ben, Stone Edge, for printing off these stunning IO units for this project. The semi-transparent orange and blue colors are a nice contrast, don't you think? What are your thoughts on the Blue Retro PC Engine dongle? Is it something you would like to get for your PC Engine gaming setup? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me on this quick hardware review. Till next time, stay safe, but above all, stay scruffy looking. Who's scruffy looking? Impressive.